Hello everybody, with another month down, here are all the video games I beat for March. So for the first game that I beat in March, it was Katamari Damacy Reroll. This is a port of the PlayStation 2 game. I never got to play it. I will admit, I saw the title, looked at the game cover, and went, what the hell is this game? And just went, no, it's not for me. I'm going to call it. So that's why I kind of went, yeah, I'm not going to worry about this one. But actually, it's a really fun game. You are basically a little guy who looks like an alien. You're about this big. And you start rolling up different parts of the world and you're collecting random objects all the way up to where you're collecting houses, cars, people, and you just start collecting them and then you want to get a planet because there's a guy telling you, he's a big guy, he's got a beard and he's like, we, I think he's a god, we are wanting to make the solar system again so please help us by randomly getting this ball of people and cars and animals and just we'll just send it up into space and I'm like that concept is really weird the cutscenes are really weird too like the people that are there are just like oh isn't that so and so isn't it we're going to miss her plane but then you see the star and whatever so the concept's weird but the game is fun I will say that if I had picked this up at PlayStation 2 era I probably would have sold it because my teenage brain would have went, what? So, glad I played it now, because <laughs> I understand the weird shenanigans from the game, and I understand it, and I, and I accept it and love it for the way it is. The next game is also a weird one, but it's got a heavy tone to it. It's Still Stand. This is the people that made a couple games that I've played on here. Um, Lydia was another game that they have made, I believe, or developed or published, I'm not sure. And it basically was in a bundle and I was like, oh, wow, so that game is made. So I literally just went and bought that individual game because I already had Lydia and I didn't want to pay for Lydia again, but I also wanted to try the game. So pretty much is you're a woman. It's kind of like comic book style where you are looking and exploring as a puzzle where you see like a picture and you have to find what to interact with. And when you find it, you interact with it, and then it'll go to the next scene. She's making a lot of poor decisions. She is, her, like, I think her mental health is not good right now, and she is just secluded in her room. And she's trying to get out, and so you see her going out every now and then, making a bad decision, and regretting it, and then going, you know what, I'm not going to go out anymore. Screw that, let's call it a day. So I get the tone. It's not a game I would have streamed or played with some friends. It's literally a game where you're looking and watching the message of the game. And that's where the game is good because you go, oh, it's kind of like therapy. You're looking at it and you're going, hmm, yeah, we need to definitely give this message out to the world. So to the game developers who made that game, thank you. It needed to be made and it's not very long. So if you want to play the game, it's literally about an hour, hour and a half. The third game that I played was Burnout Paradise Remastered. I had been playing this from February and it took me a little while because I would do a few races and then I would go to another game, do a few races. So it was kind of like another game where I knew it was going to be longer so I would pluck it into whenever I could. So I played for like an hour or two because I didn't want to just keep playing it and getting burnt out. <laughs> So I played it. I had fun. I, I, I liked it. I had Burnout. I just don't remember which games I had from Burnout. And I liked the crash mechanics, although the crash mechanics were a little off on some areas where you would you would feel like you were not even hitting the car and then just go crash. And I'm like, dude, I didn't even hit the car. I wasn't even near it. I was like, I had a little bit of space in between. So I think that the crash mechanic is a little off on some areas. Sometimes it's just like, it's not registering the crash. And I'm like, I'm hitting the guy. He's supposed to go and get crashed. So I don't know if it's the remaster because I never played the original game. So if it is, it's not bad. I just went and kept playing because if I failed it, I just would go back because it's one of the older games where if you failed it, you had to go all the way back to the beginning where you started. So the map, it could be like you're on the west side of the map and you had to go back all the way to the east. It's like the old games, it's like GTA 4 where you hated it, but you had to do it because it was part of the story, it's part of the game mechanics. 
I just accepted it and moved on. So that's the only issue I had was I was like, oh, I forgot about this. This is probably from the PlayStation 2 era as well. And those games were not fun to deal with at all. So the next game that I played was Plants vs. Zombies on the Xbox 360, playing on the Xbox One. And basically, the game mechanics were really fun. I thought it was Endless Loop, to be honest. And no, there's a story to it, and you can have an ending and a boss at the very end. Simple mechanics, you get some plants. They all have their own specific power, what they can do. Some shoot straight directly. Others, they wait until a zombie walks over them. And you have to keep the horde of zombies away from your family and you in your house. And so you plant them and you watch them battle. And if one of them gets eaten, you go back and you do it again. Which I didn't know <laughs> zombies will eat anything. I thought they were just about, you know, carnivore style. But apparently not. So it's a fun game. I will admit that... I don't think I would have paid for this as well. Like, I really didn't play it at all. And Game Pass has been an amazing reason to play games that I never would have thought about because I passed this up. I really thought it wasn't going to be fun because I was like, it's geared towards kids. I'm a teenager. Why do I want to play this? I'm an adult. Like, I don't need to play this. I'm good. But it's really fun. I do recommend it to anybody to try this out. It's simple. It's easy. But... It does have a challenge to where you think, oh, I'm just going to put these here. And, and then it's like, oh, crap. Uh, and I got to wait for this. There's a timer for that. I got to wait for this. So strategy is the main objective of this game. And if you're bored, it's a time filler and it's worth your time. After Plants vs. Zombies, I got to play one of the PlayStation Network PlayStation Plus games that was offered. And that was Team Sonic Racing. This one was good. I will say that... It's a little hard to get used to because most racing games, it's just you and the car and the other people and you got to get through it. It was one game that you had to utilize your other AI characters and if they all were last and you were first, you still lost. So you had to make sure that they were okay and keep giving them health boosts, bonuses, different things. So I would collect stuff, make sure I give them to them, hand them off when they asked for help just to make sure I could get them further into it because you wanted them at least fourth or fifth in in the race or higher so that you get the most points and I seen a lot of people uh, like I don't understand it it's like seriously it's it's a game where if your AI is horrible whoever you pick you better make sure that you really help them out because I've had times where I was like I was first what uh, they both were 11th and 12th great and another thing I wish the bosses were a little bit harder. I've never complained about bosses being, you know, easy or hard or whatever, but this one was like, there was no challenge. The bo I, I saw the bosses and I was like, oh, cool, we're gonna actually have a challenge, it's gonna be difficult. Um, I breezed through it. I had no issues, I had no problems. The only thing that you had to figure out was who does what. As soon as you realize who does what, Tails is more curvy, he can get through the signs, because there was like times where you had to go through the signs, get them, figure them out, you were good. So learn their game mechanics, what they can do, and that's easy peasy lemon squeezy, and you're done. The next game that I beat was Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the Genesis. This was a fun game. It's again, just like the Super Nintendo version, but it's not battling putties. So you are immediately facing a Power Ranger versus another boss. So all the bosses in the Super Nintendo version, you're battling them here. You have Goldar, you have uh, different, even the last, you can see right here, even the last guy, you battle him. He is there and he also has two forms. That was so difficult. I, I, will, I probably have to, again, practice to get a 1cc on this, but it was fun. I had a good time with this game. I loved the version. It was easier sometimes on certain parts because certain guys were like, oh, just keep up uppercutting him. Yeah, uppercut is just like Mortal Kombat. You uppercut them, they go flying in the air, and you can actually uppercut them again. So, like, you can, like, Tekken, you can make them bounce off of your hand for a little bit. So, you can get, like, three times, and then the game goes, nope, I have to drop him. So, it's fun. I enjoyed this one. So definitely give this version a try if you've never played this version. 
It's short. It's sweet. You will not have any problems with time. If you are saying, like, I need to play a game. I want to play something. It's a fighter, but it's a beat-em-up. But it's not a beat-em-up, but it's a fighter. I'm confused. No, you're not. It's Power Rangers. You'll enjoy it. So the next game that I played was a game that I've been talking about with Retro Mikey on the stream. And we got to the point where I was like, let me suggest it. So I dropped it into the tournament that he was holding. And then also I was like, you know what? We, sh we should try it again. Like it was one of those games where he's like, hey, have you played it? Is How is it? I was like, it's got tank controls. It's just like Resident Evil. But it's kind of a little bit like Spyro meets Crash Bandicoot. He's like, have you played it in a while? And I was like, no, I don't know. But you know what? Since we're talking about it, let's throw it into the mix. And I played Crash and I played Spyro again. And I was like, you know what? They haven't remastered this. So let me just play the original. And sure enough, I can just say it holds up. I couldn't put this down. I kept playing this in between games. I kept playing this for a while after work. And I, I wanted to save all the little guys. So basically the story is you're seeing that these little guys are getting attacked and there's monsters entering your world and you have to save them. So you have to collect them. I couldn't stop collecting things and I couldn't stop getting the gems and I couldn't stop. I just like, it was just engulfing me and I needed to get everything. And that never really happens. I only done that a couple times where I replayed Crash and I was like, you know what? Let me add a challenge to it. And I will never do it again, but this one I might do it again. Like, I had so much fun. It, it was an easy game. It's kind of like, again, like Spyro meets Crash Bandicoot where there's platforming, but it's also open world to where you have to like look at the environment and figure out. And it took me a second, like a couple levels. I was like, wait, what am I supposed to do? Like, there's no hand holding. It's just like, you know, you have to go in, figure out what you need to do find the little guys or not find the little guys but get to the end where the door is and just hit the gong i forgot about that i was like oh there's a gong and you hit it and when you hit it that tells the the game you want to move to the next level oh that's so cute i literally kept saying that i was like this is a cute game i can see why my little self played this back in the day when i was middle school high school age i was like this is so much fun i i now need to remember to play this every now and then because it also does have uh, a lot of levels, so it takes you a little bit of time to finish this game. And definitely try it out if you have a way to find it. I know this is going up in price just like everything else, but if you can find it on emulation, download it to your PlayStation Classic or whatever you can find and try this out. Because he has a little bit of a challenge because of the tank controls. So you think, oh, it's going to be easy to jump, but you have to remember to back up, do this, do this, and then go forward. So... This will be a little bit of a challenge, but not so much to where you're going to rage and quit it. So 10 out of 10. I will not probably 100% it again, but I was engulfed the whole time. Did not put it down. After Croc, I played a little game called Unpacking. I had seen a lot of people talking about this game and I was like, what is this game? It looks interesting. It looks like a time filler. So let me play it. I downloaded it to my system and I put it in, started playing it, and I had a blast. This is a game that there's no dialogue, but you follow a person, a little girl to her adulthood, and you see the first move to a new children's bedroom. You unpack all the stuff. There is a little bit of a challenge because you have to figure out where everything goes. You can't just put everything on the floor. You have to figure out, well, will the books go on the shelves, but Sometimes they don't go on the shelves, they go into a little drawer and then you get clothes, you get different things, you have to hang them up. And it does sound boring and tedious, but actually once you start realizing, because it took me a little bit, I was like, wait, this is, oh, this is her first relationship, this is her dorm, this is that, this is that, this is, oh, oh, okay. So you're basically seeing her life unfold in front of you and you're like, oh, wow. This is so cute. And the ending, like the little end screen where you see a, like a silhouette of what could be her. It's kind of like Monsters, Inc. where you didn't get to see Boo at the very end. You're like, oh, oh, that's okay. Maybe we'll see her next time. But it was very good. I can see why a lot of people are talking about this. This game is getting a lot of hype now. It's getting physical copies. It's worth your time. It's only, again, two hours. It's a short game, but it's so 
rewarding when you see the story. And I get it. Some people said, I just didn't like it because it's unpacking. I hate unpacking. That's that's not for you. Okay, that's not for you. But at least give it a shot. Try it out. And I will say there is an option to get rid of the hard factor. I don't recommend it for the first playthrough. But if you say you just want to see the story or get the achievements, there is an option to get rid of the challenge of you have to put everything where it's supposed to go. And that way you can play it that way. But try it out for the first level. If you don't like it, at least get the story. I recommend the story. After unpacking, I played a little indie game called Lake. You are, again, another woman who is doing a favor for her father. Her father wants to go on a vacation to Florida. And you're in the 80s. And you're like, hey, this sounds like a good idea. And so I love the chill vibes of this game. You pretty much are, which is unheard of now, you basically just go in and you take over your dad's post office job. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen now. You would not have to. You'd have to do a background check, all this stuff, and you'd have to go through their quiz and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have not seen this happen in the 2000s. But it was a cute game. I, and the people who developed this actually got the rights to have movies and comics and different shows being referenced in the game and it was so cute like they had Jaws, Karate Kid, I was like oh there's a video game store like there's a rental store there's this there's that I was like oh this is so cute like you got to see people and they're talking about stuff from the 80s and I was like oh look there's a portable VHS player I have not seen one in years and she's carrying it around and giving it to people as a favor for one of the people that are running the stores that are not doing too well they are having a blast doing that and there's options to have a couple people in this uh, the town you could romance and your story could end different ways so there's multiple endings it's got a butterfly effect so how you interact with people is how it's going to be in the end um i do recommend this game it's chill i i loved it from the whole time i played it i was like oh this might not be fun but hey let's just try it because i heard a lot of people talking about it and this game will capture you from just all the fun people. Like, you're like, oh, yeah, let's go to this person. Oh, I remember this person's house. Oh, okay, so let's see if we're going to get another interesting conversation. Ooh, what did they get this time? Like, I started investing time <laughs> in people who were not real. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, it's a game. Oh, wow, I really got lost in this world. It was so fun. So, again, thank you to the developers for making this game. And try it out you will have a fun time seeing all the weird neighbors that buy weird stuff. But in the end, you find out they're going to be your friend. The next game that I played was Rise, Son of Rome. And this is like one of the very first games where it made, it was like a launch game and I never got to play it. I kept passing it up. I was like, mm, I don't know if I'm going to like the story. I don't know if I'm going to like the mechanics. It's basically like a button masher beat em up where you button mash and you just take out your sword and you start swinging. So, but you know, I was like, it's on Game Pass. If I don't like it, I only spent a couple bucks because I'm playing so many games. Just go for it. So I went for it. I actually enjoyed it. It's got a good storyline. Um, basically, you are a soldier in Rome and you witness a couple people invade your city and they kill parts of your family so you have to go and avenge them and so you have to figure out what's going on and then i'm not gonna spoil the twist endings and stuff like that but you have to battle through and fight off all the people that you can and i will say that there's not moments all the time where you're button mashing and fighting and which they have colors on their head just kind of like um tales of iron where it's either red or yellow where you dodge or parry there's actually sometimes strategy where you have to tell your men to line up and, and you have to fight off, you know, archers and different things like that. So you have to utilize what you got and the men you have to be able to battle and go through. So I recommend this game. It's fun. I did like the story and I understand the title now because there's a woman who is a spirit that you talk to throughout the whole game. And she goes, rise, son of Rome. You are not yet done with your quest. And I was like, Okay, I got you developers. You're smart. You used it. Okay, kudos to you. 
The next game that I played was, again, another Games with Gold. Um, this was the month that it was pretty fun. And I got Spongebob Truth or Square. It's a ridiculous game. It's not that difficult. It was a game that I was like, huh, I don't get it. But I really never got Spongebob, but I was like, again, it's another game that I probably will never pay for, so let me just try it now. You're pretty much Spongebob. Again, his storyline is not that complicated. He loses crap all the time. He's one of the people that you don't give him stuff, but they keep giving him stuff. And so his boss gives him the receipt to the Krusty Krab's secret recipe, and you have to put it away in the safe. And he puts it away, but he doesn't remember where he puts it. And then he goes, oh, it's in the safe, but it's not in the safe. Oh no, where did I put it? And so you have to go find it. And then you have Plankton, who's that little insect creature who's trying to get it again. He's, he always wants the secret recipe just to foil his competition. So you're battling, you're fighting creatures, and you have to go through... Uh, it's kind of like a button masher where you, you battle and you have to figure out the puzzles. The only difficult part is figuring out the puzzles where you have to shoot things to like trigger this, trigger that, to open up a gate, to open up this, to do that. It's not that difficult, but it's, it was okay. It's not for me. Like I, I, I can see the fun factor for people who do like Spongebob and do like, Patrick's the only funny character that I liked. Like anything else, I was like, mm, okay. But I will say the jumping is off the camera flicks for a second and throws you off line of where you were so you like you line it up and you're gonna jump that's the only thing that really irritated me was i was like what is wrong with the camera i don't know what is up with like older games on newer systems and the camera's freaking out but it's just been an issue for me for a while so if you play the game and it's on a newer system be ready that you might have to adjust your camera mid-air to like line it back up and I jumped and died a couple times on like little jellyfish and stuff like that because of the camera. The twelfth game that I played was Injustice 2. It's a fighter and basically you are Marvel DC characters. I can't remember how many were in there but you're Superman, you're Batman, you're Wonder Woman and a bunch of other characters. Robin, I think, and pretty much what happens is Joker causes Superman to kill his wife, who was Lois Lane, and because of that, he goes crazy and he starts wanting to kill off all the evil villains instead of just locking them up, and the other team members decide to pick sides. Some go with Batman, others go with Superman. The only thing that I don't understand is... Batman is not Superman, so the battles are too evenly matched. I'm like, he doesn't have Krypton or anything in him that's on his suit that's going to stop Superman, so how is he battling and doing so well? He's a regular human being. I can see Wonder Woman battling Superman. I can see just even Harley Quinn, who's got a big old hammer, doing a little bit better. But I just, I that's the only thing I'm like... Batman is not as good as everybody else. Why is he one of the leaders? He's got a lot of money. I get it. He's got, you know, devices. But if you just take the belt away, just rip the belt off, he's got nothing. So that was my only gripe. I've, I've always had this gripe and it's been a hot take for a long time where I'm like, I get yelled at a lot about, oh, you're just going to, in the comments, if you want to, if you want to debate about that, that's fine. I don't mind a debate, but the story is good. It's just, I wished it was, like, Wonder Woman and Superman hating each other or something like that. Because that would have been more fun to see. But, yeah. I just, I don't get it. I, I will always have that hot take. <laughs> After the fighting game, I played Ben 10 Power Trip. This one was another game that I probably wouldn't have played if I didn't have it on Xbox Game Pass. Pretty much, you are Ben 10, and you are battling a guy, I forgot the guy's name, the evil one that you're facing the whole game, and he strips you of your powers, which I don't know how, but he does it. He strips you of your powers, and you have to go find the guys that are off in the void. So you go through the world, and you find them. 
It's a very slow starter game. I don't understand. Like, I understand the tutorial section. Okay, you're teaching the kids how to play. But one of the missions literally was to get Lumberjacks back their beard. You have to go look for their beards. I'm like, why don't we just look for monsters to fight the whole time? Literally, I, I, you could have scratched off 30 minutes of the game in the beginning, and I would have loved it. I wouldn't have been complaining about the beginning. <laughs> and you would have been like, hey, it was a good game. Yeah, don't, don't start with the slow starter game. Kids are not stupid. You give them credit, please, when they need credit. I hate when they have a game developer who's like, we need to really dumb it down because it's geared towards kids. And we need to really show them how the mechanics work. And we need to give them something stupid and tedious before so that they don't get their asses handed to them. Let them let them learn. Like, we had hard games growing up. We learned. We are okay. We were not sad and crying about it. We were like, okay, this game is raging. I'm rage mode. Let me put this down. Let me play another game. This was so dumbed down in the beginning. I just hated it. Once it started picking up and actually the story was going along and you were battling monsters finally, I was cool with it. I was happy with it. But don't do that to the kids. Let them learn. Give them a tutorial. Move on. We don't need to be looking for lumberjacks, beards, and stupid crap like that. That's just my personal opinion. And the very last game for the month that I played was Yakuza 3 Remastered. And this was a very good game. I had played the first two on PlayStation 2 and I never got to play the next three games because they were on PlayStation 3 and I just didn't get a PlayStation 3 and I was sad because I really wanted to finish the story and I was like, oh man, I really want to see where the story goes. And I can say that the story went in a great direction. I enjoyed this the whole time. And again, old mechanics from old systems, you don't remember that you have to look for stuff. like. I forgot that it's not like on the map where there's like a little blimp that tells you sometimes because they just want you to do open world. They want you to go do random stuff. It's funny because you're like, oh, I gotta go help this bar out and get these girls ready for the bar and let me go give them some clothing and different things and get paid for it. And it's like, well, that, I forgot about that weird fun stuff that they have you. You can play around a golf if you wanted to just randomly. You don't have to keep going with the mission. I played this Actually, they're a whole month. This took me a whole month to play because I would play something, do a little side thing, go to this restaurant, eat. Like, it was a good, fun time. They pretty much are a gentleman who was a former Yakuza who is still in the Yakuza clan, but you're tired of battling and you want to help out kids. So you were an orphan at one time and you decide, you know what, I'm going to help out this orphanage and you help out the kids. But... Some bad guys come in and decide they're going to harass you and harass the kids. So you want to stop them, but they're eventually going to try to destroy the, the orphanage. So you go through the whole game trying to stop them. And then you find out that there might be a mole, somebody who is backstabbing the Yakuza. And you have to go in and stop them. So it's a fun game. Definitely worth your try to pick it up. I, again, it's an old game system from back in the day. So remember... It's not going to handhold you. You're going to have to look for the stuff to do. Remember what they're saying. Don't just button mash through. Listen to the dialogue. See what they're saying. And also read the prompts, whatever they're saying on there. Because, again, you will have to find the place and you have to write it down. Because that's what I did. I just wrote it down or take a, a screenshot of like whatever the guy said to go to. Because they will not remind you. There's no like, oh, let me look in the... Oh, there's no journal. So, good game. But definitely something you have to pay attention to. There you have it, everybody. There is March. I beat 14 games. So my total now is 40 games. It's a fun time. I had a blast. And we'll see what I play next month. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Keep on gaming at any level. And I'll catch you next time. If you're new, hit the sub button. Helps out the channel. Bye, everybody. Linda the Gamer Girl She's here, she's playing games Linda the Gamer Girl She's here, she's playing games